I have dreams of being a Skrillex playing in front of 20,000 people and mixing all sorts of sounds on my Mac and stuff like that. Well, there's a company that lets me actually do that. It's called Mowgli, and uh, you can play with it on Facebook, and we're going to hear all about their new uh, mobile strategy and Facebook strategy, playing social games in the music industry. Who are you? Uh, Marshall Cease Jr., founder and CEO of Mobile Games, uh, lifelong musician, temporary attorney turned entrepreneur. We're going to hear about that later. <laughs> How do you go from playing rock and roll to, to being a lawyer? I, I, that's a, at opposite ends of the scale, I think. Of Got to use every part of my brain, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, what, so you're a musician and you wanted to have other people play music or something like that? But tell me what Mowgli does. Songster is Mowgli's first product, and it's a social game on Facebook that lets anybody create their own hit music, basically. And my favorite part about music is songwriting. I think something really amazing happens when you create music because people connect with that in a very deep kind of spiritual way almost. So I wanted to kind of take that power and give it to the masses, regardless of musical background or talent. Um, you know, you open up something like GarageBand even, you know, pretty simple in the grand scheme of things creation tool. It's just overwhelming. There's so much you can do. If you don't know music, you're not going to be able to do anything really neat. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of where the idea for Songster came from. It's a super simple technology. Just drag these little clips of music onto a little grid and you hit play and all of a sudden, boom, you've got something that sounds like it should be on the radio. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I, and when The problem is when you first hear that you can create music, most people turn off, right? Because it's like, why would I want to do that? But yeah. the kids are totally into coming up with their own, uh, you know, trying to be their own DJ, right? Justice or Skrillex. These, these guys are gods. They're <laughs> partying with 20,000 people in one like this, right? Yep. And, uh, and they're all playing off a of Mac, you know? Exactly. It seems so much more achievable than watching, you know, um, Joe Santori going crazy on, you know, the guitar and be like, oh, there's no possible way. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, take, take me through what it actually looks like on, on the screen and, and sure. what people actually can do with it. Yep. Maybe create a, a, a sound in, 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 on the screen. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, the, you know, the reason we kind of put this whole music creation stuff into a game is exactly what you just said. People you hear music creation, they get scared off. So we're like, this needs to be a social game. You know, when I looked at Farmville, I was like, people are essentially creating fake farms. Well, if that's kind of the point of the game, why not create real songs if we can make it just as easy? So we say, come play our game, you know, about being a rock star, and then people almost get duped into making awesome music. And the way it works is kind of the top half of the screen is your venue. So you're playing the role of this budding rock star. You gotta go from open mic amateur to super mega rock star. But to do that, you gotta kind of play songs, play gigs, and work your way up there. So each venue has its own really cool artwork up at the top. You've got your avatar that you can pimp out with all sorts of cool rock star stuff, and then you know that all animates when you're performing the gig. But the bottom half of the screen is kind of where the magic happens. It's a very simple kind of four by eight matrix, and then you've got um, these different song packs. So you choose a song pack based upon what type of music you like, and it's guaranteed that all the little loops in that song pack are gonna work well together. Yeah. There's only 20. Five drum, five bass, five lead, five vocal. And any, everyone's got an ear, you know? Everyone can hear and know, ooh, I like the way that sounds. So when they preview it, they just drag and drop it and like clicks in just like you're snapping Legos together. But in reality, you're building a song. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And, and you can play different kinds of music, right? Yep. Dubstep or rock and roll or stuff like that. Man, our genre is like, we span everything from like country, Latin, dubstep, death metal. I mean, you name it, we've got it in there. Yeah. And how do you, what's the math going on underneath that connects the, the tiles so that they sound good? Because uh, the, the drum beats shift a little bit so that they're all synchronized, right? Exactly, yeah, that's tricky to say the least. <laughs> it took us the longest uh, development amount of time. Um, once we figure out how to kind of make it all seamlessly happen, because you're essentially mixing all these different tracks and all these different modules, left to right and top to bottom. Once you can do that, um, the trick really became how do you expand the creative options and allow people to mix genres together? So I've recently been hooked on making heavy metal and dubstep songs together. And so when you're mixing things like that, they're not in the same key, they're not in the same tempo. So you have to shift that. Um, and it's not very clear as to where you need to shift it to. So we came up with a really cool kind of algorithm that 
interprets what's happening in the first song pack you chose to intelligently change the next one that you're doing in to where it'll match, but it's not going to sound crazy. You're not going to get like chipmunk vocals or something yeah. else like that. I want to hear what dubstep and heavy metal sounds like. <laughs> Can you play that for me? Absolutely, absolutely. Let me show. I'll show you how I drag a couple things together, and uh, and then I'll, I'll hit play, and you'll, you'll hear some uh, some metal stuff. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> Um, this is a free game? It is, yeah. Okay. We follow the same kind of premium model that, that Zynga does. So, you know, about 2-3% of our user base will pay money to either download the song. So it's like the only game where you can actually take what you made out of the game yeah. as an MP3 so it can live forever with you and put it on your iPod, do whatever you want to with it. And then, you know, just like those other games, unlocking features early. Um, if you run out of virtual currency, buy more virtual currency and things of that sort that yeah. we monetize with. What have you learned? Uh, you, you just announced this at South by Southwest, right? Yes, right, so that's right. It's been out a couple months now. Uh -huh. right? What have you learned so far from the audience? What's the engagement like? What are the numbers doing? What, you know, what are you learning from your uh, users? You know, we had a very interesting thing just happen. So for the first two months, you haven't been able to mix song packs together. So you had to stick within whatever that one genre that you were working on was. And, you know, we were having decent retention. But as soon as we released mixing song tracks, which you don't even get to do until level five, retention doubled. People really wanted to keep playing and making that stuff. And through our analytics, this is probably my favorite story. I got to watch a user sign up for the first time yesterday and see what he did. He played in his first session for over four hours. He made 13 songs, invited 32 friends, bought 20 song packs, was messing around with his avatar, and it was just so neat to like watch every single event that he triggered and how he went through the game. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think the more cool features like that that we introduce, the more of those guys that we're going to be getting. What's the demographic like that, that have shown up and played this? Totally opposite of your typical social game demographic. So if the 42-year-old female is your typical Zynga player, yeah. our typical hey, you user... you my wife. <laughs> She's pretty close to that, right? She plays uh, Words with Friends like all night long. There you, know? you go. Yeah. And there are some 42-year-old women playing our game, believe it or not. Uh, but the biggest demographic is kind of 18 to 24 year old males. Okay. Um, they make up almost a third. Interesting. Yeah. And are, are there opportunities for brands? Because I, I, I'm a big American Idol fan and yep. I noticed uh, Coke and Ford are doing songs with the contestants or in Coke's uh, case, they're asking peop people to uh, send in lyrics yep. and then a professional singer puts that together. This is sort of the same kind of thing, but on the internet, on Facebook, right? You nailed it. Like that, that was kind of all part of my strategy when we first started because when I saw the power of social games, like, man, none of these are really built well for brain integration. So we've kind of developed a concept that we call gray labeling, yeah. um, which is like a white labeled experience. So we can brand it, make it look exactly like Coke stage or Red Bull stage or um, even artists. Like, you know, we're working out deals with some, some pretty big name artists right now to kind of bring them into the game. Yeah. But they get their own branded experience. And this whole game, Songster itself, including that experience, can live on their fan page yeah. to drive additional traffic and more engagement on their fan page because that ratio of likes to talking about this is so low. That's a cool way to kind of bump that up by getting people to do something cool on the page. But once they're done with that experience, they can go play the rest of Songster. Yeah. So it enables us to you know, offer it a, a very low price rather than go out and hire some development shop and pay close to half a million dollars to do some sort of cool you know, remix technology type thing. We've already got that. It's a matter of skin. Will, Will I am and I have talked about this. He really wants to make music morphable, where mm -hmm. the, the fans can change his music and take it further. Uh, and, and if I was Skrillex, I would assume I would want people to be little Skrillexes out there, right? And yep. play with my music and change it. it are you working with uh, music brands like Lady Gaga yeah. or Skrillex or something like that to put their put a couple of their songs or a couple of their loops in there and let people go to town and try to be, you know, a little monster like Lady Gaga, you know, or... <laughs> that is exactly what we're doing. In fact, we've got one deal that um, I can't disclose just yet, but it'll be coming out in probably the coming weeks where um, a new single is actually going to be released exclusively through our application for a week. Yeah. And the single will be whatever you want it to be. So it's not, you know, the, the real one that the artist did will come out, you know, a week later, and you'll be able to hear what they did with it. But first, it's almost, almost kind of this mystery guessing game of what is it? What did they do with it? But here's what I did with it. And you start sharing that around and building up this buzz about what, you know, what the artist's interpretation of it could be. Wow. But I definitely see that being a trend in the music industry. I think um, 
you know, where Steve Jobs disaggregated the album and started selling songs, the next step is disaggregating the songs and selling the pieces of the songs and let people kind of use those to create their own versions of things. Yeah, it, which is exactly what Skrillex or Justice are doing, right? In, yep. in front of all these parties. Or Will I Am? I saw, yeah. I saw him play at a party and with a MC Hammer, and they were just doing the, exactly that. They were pulling in lots of little clips and, and piecing them together up on stage and doing some entertainment too, you know, <laughs> flashing lights and dancing and stuff like that. But flashing lights and dancing is very important. You know. <laughs> it's in the game too. <laughs> really? Yes. That lights nice? flash and your avatar dances. I mean, you can't lose that. <laughs> Uh, tell me a little bit about the company and how it got funded and what stage yeah. stage you're, you're building your company is in. Absolutely. Um, had the idea about a year and a half ago and then started kind of building a team around it and did the typical bootstrapping, everyone working in off hours, had day jobs. Um, but once we started getting a lot closer on the Alpha project, I was like, man, I, I need to quit my job. So I, I left being general counsel for a big consulting company <laughs> to go run a video game company and um, did that for six months without pay and then we ended up raising some angel funding. Um, out of Atlanta, oddly enough. And Atlanta is a very B2B focused yeah. investment community. Everybody told me, this, there's no way you're going to raise money for a consumer game. Really? Um, but four months later, we'd raised over half a million dollars, and that's you know really gotten our, our team of 12 together and running full steam ahead at uh, making this happen. So, very awesome. Yeah, it's very exciting. Awesome. Um, where do you think things are going? Uh, with, you know, Facebook has just gone to IPO and uh, yeah. being really crazy. Where do you think the social world is going, and, and how are you getting that viral loop like Zynga did, right? Zynga spammed yep. the crap out of our feeds for so long <laughs> that we all got addicted to their games, right? And now the virality is going down on those games where you can even block them. I don't see any Zynga games anymore because I blocked them on exactly. my feed. Um, where, how are you going to get that the more users? You know, or, you know I think it's really going to be tying in the technologies together. So. Um, you know, most games, they're just trying to replicate themselves on different platforms, yeah. and I don't see that necessarily being a sustainable model. I think what becomes a lot more interesting, because I think Facebook will be around for a very long time, and it's gonna have its place, and you know, the more that it grows, the more that it morphs, it's really gonna find its niche. So let's just say social gaming is its niche. Maybe, you know, a large contingent of people block it, like I have too, in some, a lot of cases, because it's obnoxious, but there's a large enough community there that likes it. Yeah. To where it can live there and that can work for the game aspect of it now the mobile devices become really interesting for music creation because of all the gestures that you can do and you can really kind of do some more interesting stuff there so tying the two together you know for example we'll be releasing a mobile app in, a, in about a month it'll be the microphone so you're making your songs on the Facebook game but now you can actually add your own vocals from the phone and then you can start making your own kind of stuff on the phone too and you start to build this ecosphere where it's the same game everything is tied together yeah. But the user experiences are really catered towards the um, the winning characteristics of those devices and those technologies. Oh, that's cool. There's a lot of uh, people in the tech industry who are good singers too, right? <laughs> exactly. Chris Sock is an investor. You should talk to him. Uh, uh, Randy Zuckerberg, the sister of Mark Zuckerberg, is really good. I've, I've seen her <laughs> sing several times at several different parties. That's and awesome. Drew Houston runs Dropbox is really awesome. So <laughs> you should get a, a bunch of these guys to sing and you know, put voice clips in there, and we can mix, you know, Absolutely. the Silicon Valley voice I'm, pack. I'm just gonna start cold calling them and, <laughs> and make sure <laughs> not not uh, let up until they actually do it. <laughs> Very cool. Well, thanks for coming out and showing it to me and uh, oh, talking about the social gaming world. Uh, Absolutely. It's been a pleasure, Rob. Uh, by the way, where do we learn, where do we get it? Absolutely. Uh, PlaySongster.com.